So welcome back. Uh, we are now continuing with our chemical reactions. So in the third lecture, what we will do, we will go ahead and see in this particular lecture what happens to the dissociation of a molecule, a gas molecule. So our lecture is that's why titled degree of ionization of gas molecules. So, we will be studying the degree of ionization of a gas as a function of partition function. So, most of the time we need to study this because when you have a gas molecule, it can then break up into its constituent atoms and its ion that is this ion, it can break into your ion and, the, and release the electron. So, it means it is the ionization happening of a gas molecule. So, we need to study these concepts. Why we will need to? We will see this, why it is that much important. And then from this ionization, then we will have partition function of the ion, of the electron and of the undissociated atom. So, how are they related to each other and how we can obtain the thermodynamic properties from such partition function. So, we will be studying thus on those systems such as reacting mixtures with large heat capacity. Here our focus is not on transport properties. So transport properties means like flow of a gas molecule, ionized gas molecules, we are not concerned about that, we are only concerned about the thermodynamics that is when such a reaction occurs a huge amount of heat is released. So obviously there will be difference and in the heat capacities, the heat capacities will rise. So, when the heat capacity is significantly increased due to the reaction, the thermal conductivity of the gas also exhibits a substantial increase. So, when heat capacity rises, obviously thermal conductivity also rises. So, the dissociation reaction of any molecule is characterized by a substantial release of thermal energy. At elevated temperatures, the gas molecules will undergo dissociation on the surface thereby absorbing the heat generated during the reaction. So, what will happen is at elevated temperature when you have gas molecules, they will come near to the surface, they will undergo dissociation and once they undergo dissociation, these then the molecules will migrate towards the cooler surface where they will again back again reassociate and release the remaining heat during the reaction. Okay. So, the reaction proceeds here leads to a significant rate of heat transfer and a correspondingly high effective thermal conductivity. So, it means there are two things happening. First is uh, some dissociation of a molecule is taking place and once the molecule has dissociated, then it releases large amount of energy and this large of energy is then again used to increase the heat capacity. So, it will again dissociate and again it will reassociate because it is going to the cooler surface. So, one scenario which is con very important for example, why we need to do such calculation is when gas molecules may ionize or dissociate. It is particularly crucial to consider this factor during the development of heat shield for spacecraft. So, those spacecraft suppose they are re-entering the earth. So, when they enter the earth they will encounter frictional huge amount of friction with the atmosphere. So, during this re-entry due to the phenomenon of the frictional heating because of the air, air has the molecules of air when it um, have in contact, when it is in contact with the you know the spacecraft. So, there will be frictional heating on the surface. So, it is possible then for the gas in the boundary layer or the spacecraft boundary layer, the gas which it is immediately present in the vicinity of the spacecraft may ionize and because it may reach such high temperatures that are capable of causing ionization. So, engineers must consider this factor during the design process. So, now let us see how we can capture this particular process. So, we will now try to compute the degree of ionization of a gas of atoms. So, we have a gas of atoms we want to compute what is the degree of ionization and how it is related to the temperature. So, ionized gases, so let us write down the partition function. So, suppose the our system has ions, the electrons and the atoms. So, it is a mixture of ions, electrons, ions, so or we can say mixture of ions, electrons and ions. So, it means if I want to write down there will be three entities, so overall partition function will be Q let us say this is the QA by NA factorial raised to the power of NA. 
So, this is the partition function of the atom, the undissociated atoms multiplied by Q of the ion. Ni here is the number of ions. And then you also have the electron. So, you will have another term related to electron. So, that will be Qe by any factorial. Okay. So, it is this sort of reaction is going on. An atom releases its ion plus an electron. Okay. So, at any instant of time you will have atom undissociated form then ion its corresponding ion and a electron. So, you can assume that this is Na, Ni, Ne respectively and based on that because they can be do with the help of a product I have written the overall partition function for the entire system. Now, we have also run we learned what is the equilibrium constant. So, I can write down the equilibrium relation also. So, you know I can write down in terms of partition function q i into v. So, the product side goes in the numerator by q e into v upon q a upon v is equal to I can convert it to number average in terms of concentration. This is also true. Okay. So, this is the equilibrium relation I, E and A represents the ion, electron and atom respectively. Now, define x an independent variable, this x I can reply as something like this N A is equal to initial number of atomic moles N A is naught minus x. At any instant of time, what will be the number of molecules of atom A? It will be initial number of atoms at the start of the reaction minus amount of atoms reacted. Then what will be the number of electrons produced? It will be x and same thing what will be number of ions produced? Again it will be x. So, it is something like that if this re this is the reaction I am talking about. So, it will be Na naught minus x will give you x and x moles of or moles or molecules of ion and electrons respectively. So, once you do this then I can write down the expression here. I can write down this expression. So, from 1 you replace all Na, Ni, Ni in terms of variable x. So, if you replace that and then write down this expression and take the ln the logarithmic both side. So, it will be ln q Na naught minus x into ln of q a upon Na naught minus x plus x into ln of q i upon x plus x ln of q e upon x plus n a naught plus x this term. Okay. So, what I did? I did nothing. I just replaced all the values of n a, n i, n e in terms of n a naught minus x, x and x respectively and then I took a logarithmic value of q on both sides. So, I obtain this. So, the equilibrium constant can will take the form the previous expression we have already written. So, equilibrium constant we have already written as q i by v into q e by v. These are the partition function of ion and electron respectively. Okay. Then you will have q a upon v. So, this I can write down as because you have the number. So, if, if you consider the number, we wrote that N A by V. So, this is nothing but N I by V into N E by V by N A by V. Now, 1 V will stay here, 1 by V. So, this becomes N I into N E by N A. Okay. 
so ni is x into x x into x in terms of n a n a will be n a naught minus x n a naught minus x. So, this is nothing but x s square upon v into n a naught minus x. So, this is the relation between the partition function and the conversion. So, the condition of there are certain assumption we now have to take in order to evaluate the LHS in order to evaluate the partition function of the ion, electron and the atom, we have set the condition of zero energy to the atom at rest and the electronic energy difference between the atoms and ions have been ascribed to the ions. So, we cannot have a electronic dependency on both atoms and ions. So, we have said that the difference is now we have delegated to only ions. In addition, the computation of the partition function for the electron has been conducted using the particle in a box model and the electronic degeneracy for the atom is unity. So, the reactant is unity and for the product side both for ion and electron it is 2. With this let us define the overall partition function. We have we know the RHS now we let us evaluate the LHS. So, now it is given by so you have this QA by V for the atom q a by v will be 2 pi as before we did it earlier also mass of the atom into h s square to the power of 3 by 2 ok into omega a into this is ground state electronic degeneracy because the difference we have ascribed it to the ion. So, for the ion it will be let us say this is for atom and uh, electron we have to write it for electron also q v by v is equal to the same expression it will be just the mass of electron k t by h square by 3 by 2 ok. Then again the ground state is for the electron electronic degeneration at the ground state is the degeneracy itself and then you have this for ion. What is for ion? Ion it will be same 2 pi m i k t by h square whole 3 by 2. Here you will have the into e to the power of minus e. So, I have provided the difference of the energies of the first state only to the ion. I am not putting it to both atom and ion. I can put only for one. Let us suppose it is for ion. So, now I can write down the number average equilibrium constant which is equal to nothing but q i by v into q e by v by q a by v ok. This we know already and this if you substitute all the values you will see this is 3 by 2. So, you will see this the factors here will almost cancel out except for the masses except for the masses because we know the degeneracy of both electron and the ion is 2. So, there will be a factor of 2 and 2 the 2 and 2 it will be 4 here outside remaining things everything will get cancelled out. So, what we have is only this term e to the power of minus e i by k t. So, if I want to write it down it will be simply 4 upon 2 pi m e by k t by h s square by 3 by 2 e to the power of minus ok because you have this value as equal to 1 unity. Now, you have the numerator and denominator with atom and ion molecular masses which is the same. So, they cancel out. So, you will only have a molecular mass of electron present in the numerator side and that is exactly what we are having and this 4 comes due to the fact that the multiplication of degeneracy of 2 for both electron and ion. So, this is the expression. And uh, we also know in terms of density or concentration, 
you have this expression from the previous slide okay so it is coming out to be x square upon v of n a naught minus x so these two equations you need to observe okay so because this observation is from coming from the concentration that is the conversion extent and this the previous equation comes from the partition function so let us rearrange and also find an expression of volume because we are still not able to do for the volume part so we will apply the ideal gas law in this case so uh, so it will be pv summation of j of n j k t so total number of moles so it's equal to n a plus n e plus n i into k t okay or i can write down this as in terms of the conversion extent n a minus x plus x plus x okay into k t which is equal to you see the two cancels out ultimately we get is equal to this n a naught plus plus x by k t so it means the volume here is equal to n a naught plus x into k t by p this is the relation for volume now this volume expression if I want to put it as equation 3 and equation 2 and 1 is given in the previous slide if I just substitute that value of v in the previous equation 2 in the previous expression you have this x square into v of n a naught minus x okay this expression I can take the form of if I write v in terms of this expression 3 this will be x square into uh, it will be n a naught plus x into k t by p into n a naught minus x so if you take up these variables at the top so you will get x square by k t by p you can put it like this and this will become this is a plus b a minus b so it is a square minus b square so a naught whole square minus x square this you will be getting okay and this we need to equate it to the value which we just now obtained that is what is that value which is now obtained that is equal to 4 into 2 pi m e k t h s square 3 by 2 e to the power of minus by k t okay because both are expressions of k n so we can write it equal to each other so if you write these two equal to each other I can write down this particular function so in this case I can just simplify it and write this way x square upon n a not whole square minus x square equals to so what I will do I will take this 4 p here and kt kt by p in this side so it will be 4 kt by p 4 kt by p then remaining terms remains the same m e by kt by h square 3 by 2 e to the power of minus tronic 1 by kt so this term I can write down it is a function of f function which is a function of temperature and pressure okay so this is a function of temperature and pressure so depending upon your temperature and pressure values you can get this value of the right hand side okay so if I want to define another variable y y I can define as equal to x upon n a naught so which implies that y I can write down as f upon 
1 plus f root of f upon 1 plus f. So, you can substitute these values you can see that because if uh, x square it is n s square minus x s square. So, if you apply y equal to x by n a in this expression ok. So, you will get to know that this is nothing but your y becomes root of f upon 1 plus f. So, this is the correlation between this particular function and y. So, y can be taken as a some function little dissociation of the atom. So, this leads to now we have got an expression of the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration or in terms of number both. Now, take out other values that is what is the because we need to find out the derivative of all this. So, for thermodynamic properties we need to have the ln terms of each of them. So, do ln q by do t then will be at constant volume equal to do ln q e by do t at constant volume this will be equal to 3 by 2 t because there is no exponential term here. But for do ln q i for the ion form which has the exponential term you take the derivative with respect to temperature in volume you will get 3 by 2 t plus E i by k t square ok. So, this you require because you want to get the thermodynamic properties. You have one expression where you can express the dissociation constant with partition function. Now, the thermodynamic properties. Now, what is the overall internal energy? Internal energy will be nothing but your 3 by 2 into n k t. What is n here? n is the total number of molecules that is n a plus n i plus n e. Now, you keep on added plus there will be n i into e i ok. So, this is the total internal energy because this is the total uh, number of ion in number of molecules and this is due to the electronic contribution contribution ok. This is the electronic contribution because of this electronic composition. So, we will have a total value as a sum of these two terms. So, uh, this will be nothing but if I want to write in terms of y, so it will be first let us me write in terms of dissociation constant. So, it will be 3 by 2 n a naught plus x. So, this one even knowing how it is coming because if I write everything in n a naught this n a becomes n a naught minus x, this becomes x, this becomes x. So, this will becomes n a naught plus x and then plus x n i is nothing but x into e i ok. So, u per mole of now per mole of gas initially present this is nothing but. So, what you do is k you write down k so, you have this k you know the relation between k and r, r k into Avogadro's number is equal to r ok. So, you write down those. So, 3 by 2 it will be 3 by 2 r t 1 plus y plus then y into E i upon So, how did that came because you are replacing something. So, n a naught is something to be divided by n a naught because n a naught here is Avogadro's number. So, if you take Avogadro's number because x by n a naught is you remember first that here yeah, I am just writing down that y is nothing but x by n a naught ok x by n a naught. So, another thing you should understand is gas constant the R is nothing but k into n into Avogadro ok. So, these two expression you should understand. So, when I put here R is equal to k n a v. So, what I will do is I will write here k in this expression I will write here k 
is equal to R upon the Avogadro's number. So, R upon Avogadro's number if you substitute here, so I am just doing it for you here, this is becomes 3 by 2 into R of N A V, then it is become N A naught plus X. Now, what you do is you can assume the initial number of moles as 1 mole that is Avogadro's number of molecules. So, N A V is N A naught that you assume. So, if you do that you will get this term as 3 by 2 into R let R be inside take N A V out inside. So, it will be N A naught by N A naught only nothing else plus X upon N A naught. So, this is nothing but you will be having 3 by 2 R this will be 1 plus this x by n naught we know it is y so y so from here this 3 by 2 r 1 plus y is coming so this 1 plus y is coming and this y is due to x because this x again if i want to write x is, is equal to y into n naught so since it is per mole per mole means so i am multiplying with n naught per mole so that's why this x becomes only x so, y only because when you multiply with n a naught both sides, so this becomes y into n a naught which is equal to per mole basis. So, in per mole basis we have this expression in terms of dimensionless quantities called as y. So, like this you can also find out C v, C v is equal to dou u by dou t at constant volume v. Okay. This uh, is very pretty simple, uh, now you can do, you can take 3 factors here is 3 by 2 RT as one factor, 1 plus y as another factor. Do the differential, you will get 3 by 2 R 1 plus y plus 3 by 2 RT dou y by dou t plus this term EI electric ok simplify so this is the another term ok you will get you can simplify it much more 3 by 2 r of 1 plus y plus 3 by 2 r t because you have a common derivative so you can club them together so you need to know the derivatives of this value dy by dt at constant volume to evaluate the specific heat capacity of constant volume C V. Likewise, the enthalpy can also be determined H is equal to U plus P V. Okay. So, this is nothing but U already found out that is 3 by 2 R T T 1 plus Y plus Y E i electronic 1 plus 1 plus y r t. Now, what is this p v? Because we have already a expression for p v because p v we have found out that expression if I want to write you there. So, I have replaced the value of p v as 1 plus y r t. This is coming from this expression. So, this term P V uh, I can write down we know that V is equal to N A naught plus X into K T by P this we know already previously. So, now I can just write P V equal to N A naught plus X into K T. Now, I will replace K with R if I replace k with r, so this becomes, so because this will be r upon n a naught, so n a naught plus x into r upon n a naught or is Avogadro's number whichever way you want to think. So, you take this n a naught inside, so it will be 1 plus x by n a naught is this y, 1 plus y into r t. So, this is what p v is equal to 1 plus y equal to r t. So, this is for enthalpy. Now, if you take the derivative of this with respect to temperature, you get the specific heat capacity at constant pressure. 
So CP, you can take the derivative at constant pressure. So you will get 5 by 2 of R. So I can actually uh, add up these two numbers 3 by 2 RT here and 1 RT here. That by this uh, final term becomes 5 by 2 RT of 1 plus Y okay plus y into e i upon 1. So now you take the derivative of this expression number let us say 1 again 1 here take the derivative of this with respect to temperature you will get 5 by 2 r t r into 1 plus y plus 5 by 2 r t into dou y by dou t plus dou y upon dou t at constant pressure and again if you want to rearrange it properly it becomes 5 by 2 r of 1 plus y plus 5 by 2 r t dou y upon dou t at p. So, you need to know again this derivative term dou y by dou t at constant pressure. So, once you know this then you can compute the specific heat capacity at constant pressure. So, this was all about the thermal properties that is Cp and Cv. We will take one problem. So, here question here is in a high temperature surface catalytic process nitrogen is dissociated into nitrogen radicals according to the reaction this. Calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction at this temperature assuming nitrogen remains in its ground electronic state and all electronic degeneracies are unity. Starting with pure nitrogen calculate the fraction of nitrogen that is dissociated at 1 bar and this temperature okay so you are asked to calculate it the fraction of nitrogen which is dissociated at 1 bar so you are given a temperature but you are given a pressure also and you have to find out how this nitrogen has been dissociated into its nitrogen radical so it's like on a catalyst surface it is dissociated usually we see these processes in the catalytic reaction or heterogeneous reactions where you have a catalyst surface some uh, reactants come they react and then again dissociate and then into products. So, this is the overall uh, rate constant equation the equilibrium constant. So, you have you can see because the reaction is N2 plus M is a reversible reaction 2N plus M. So, M you know these are catalyst sites. So, N2 it does not take part in any of the reaction. So, I will not consider this M sites for any partition function evaluation because they are not at all any does not depend upon the rate of the reaction. So, essentially you have this only N2 dissociating into 2N. So, that is what I have written the number equilibrium constant in number in terms of <coughs> partition function. Substitute the partition function value. So, it is 2 pi m n mass of nitrogen atom k t by h square and you have the degeneracy here which is equal to unity by nitrogen this is 3 by 2 omega n 2 omega n 2 again is 1 then t upon sigma n 2 what will be this value you know this will be 2 and the rotational temperature and the system temperature this temperature t is nothing but equal to 4 4 0 0 Kelvin okay this temperature and then you have the dissociation energies of nitrogen by 2 by 1 minus exponential term. So, you should be knowing all these values and then you substitute all these values let us do it in the next slide. So, if I uh, I just rearrange the term so you have the term of m n here and m n 2 here. So, I have rearranged everything these terms here okay. So, now what it is I need to substitute these values. So, I have substituted all the values here. So, you know this entire term can be reduced in terms of this constant into m into t to the power of 3 by 2 ok. Mass m is 14 for nitrogen atom. Then uh, this temperature is 4400 
2.82 and 2.89 is the rotational temperature, you have 9.76 dissociation constant multiplied by the constant to convert them into kilojoules per mole R and T and this is 30, 3390 is the vibrational temperature of nitrogen N2. So, you substitute all the values. So, what you will be having is simply uh, you know, this term which is given in the denominator, you do it. So, you will get something which is in molecules per cc. So, you will get after all this necessary uh, calculation some value that is 4.6972 to the power of 18 molecules per meter cube. But molecules per meter cube is not a good idea of going forward, you should always do it in per mole basis. So, what I will do on a molar basis m, so this is the expression in, in terms of molar basis the equilibrium constant is equal to number equilibrium constant in terms of number by Avogadro's number raised to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient which is equal to 1 here because you have 2 molecules getting produced, 1 molecule is a reactant. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. So, this summation of Vi is equal to only 1. So, it is NaV only. So, I know Kn, I know Avogadro's number, I you convert it to moles per meter cube and this moles per meter cube is nothing but the mass square of the nitrogen atom because here you are having this N2 going to 2N. You may have M here or M here. So, 2N means square of the mass square by mass of nitrogen N2 because stoichiometry is 1, here stoichiometry is 2. So, this is equal to 2. So, now I can write in terms of um, equilibrium constants and then after equilibrium constant amount reacted. So, if amount reacted I multiply with the initial mass 1 minus x is the amount reacted. So, this will be 2 x. So, obviously total mass is equal to mass of nitrogen plus mass of nitrogen atom which is nothing but again if I add these two it is 1 minus x in this is plus 2 x. So, all this takes up this expression. Okay. So, this will take up this expression total volume then you can have to find out that is summation of m i upon r t by p summation of m i this term is nothing but your expression here. So, you substitute the initial mass of nitrogen into 1 plus x r t by p. So, but if you start with the initial uh, mass with having unity of nitrogen of n 2 is equal to 1 we have m n 2 is 1 minus x m n is 2 x volume will be 1 plus x r t by p. This is exactly what we have derived when we have did it for the ionization of the molecule. Now, you substitute all the values in the equilibrium constant in molar basis, it will be 4 x square 1 minus x s square into r t by p. So, this k dash you should now evaluate. So, this k dash is k m into r t by p. So, k m we have got this is k m r t and then p. So, k m into r t by p is equal to this value. Now, this value is equal to 2 x square by 1 minus x square. So, you yeah, again solve for this value. So, this comes from x square equal to root of k dash. So, it is 2.594 into 10 raise to the power of minus 6 by 4 plus 2.594 into 10 raise to the minus 6 solve for x. So, if you solve for x, you get x as 8.053 10 to the power of minus 4. So, now you see how inert nitrogen gas is. Even at a temperature of close to 4490 Kelvin, you can hardly be able to break any of the nitrogen molecule. So, that is why this nitrogen is always used as a inert. So, that is why these values are very, very less. Almost you can say it is 0 at 1 bar. So, this completes a part of our this dissociation of gas molecule. So, I again want you to go through chapter 5 and do a unsolved solve problem is there in this Sandler's book. Please go through that book which talks about the ionization of argon molecule. Thank you. Mm -hmm.